Good morning, everyone. I really enjoy winter, but this warm weather and sunshine is putting a smile on my face. I thank God that we live in a place where we can experience the four seasons the way we get to do in Southwestern Ontario. This week's lesson is number 10 in your book. It's called Don't Be a Fool. And this week's activity pack is in the separate bag I gave you in the beginning. Here's today's story. Don't be a fool, lesson 10. Gary, Tommy, and Matt spent every spare minute working on their tree house. They used some old lumber at the building site. Tommy's father gave them nails and hammers. They built the house in a large tree behind Gary's house. Matt made a sign for the doorway that read, members only. The boys were excited to finally have their tree house finished. The big weekend finally came. The boys were having their first sleepover. They invited two other boys who lived on the street. They also invited a new boy who had just moved into the neighborhood. Each boy brought something to eat or to drink. They had some games to play. It would be great fun. Saturday evening, six boys eagerly climbed up to the treehouse. They unrolled their sleeping bags and put sacks of food over in the corner. Matt brought a card game. They all sat around a lantern playing and laughing. It was great. As typical with boys, they were soon hungry. Gary had a big bag of chips. Tommy had some candy bars and one boy brought cookies. They had cans of Coke and Pepsi. The new boy had a can that looked a little different. He sipped it and offered it to Matt. Matt took a whiff of the can and he realized it was beer. What should Matt do? Should he take a drink so the new boy wouldn't think he was a wimp? Should he refuse? What would happen if Gary's dad found them drinking beer? Jesus talked to his disciples about the time he would return to earth. He said no one knows the exact day or hour when he will come back. Some people will be working in their gardens. Some people will be doing housework. Jesus' return will come as a surprise to everyone. He warned them not to be doing anything they shouldn't do when he returns. There was a servant who was in charge of a large household. His job was to take care of feeding the children and making sure all the work was done properly. This man had a very responsible position. One day, the servant didn't feel like doing his work. He said, my master won't be home for a while. I can do whatever I want. And he decided to have a party. Everyone was drinking and soon the servant was drunk. He started abusing the other servants. The master came home and found the man in his condition. He punished him immediately. Jesus told the disciples, don't be like that servant. You can find that in Matthew 24 verses 45 through 50. Alcohol gives people false courage. False courage can lead you to do things that you will regret. It can make you angrier than you should be. It can lead you to do foolish things like fighting. Your memory verse says, wine gives false courage. Hard liquor leads to brawls. What fools men are to let it master them. When a person becomes a drunkard, alcohol has mastered him. God says that neither thieves or greedy people, drunkards, slanders, or robbers will be in God's kingdom. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Alcohol is addictive and can control and ruin your life. Your judgment is hindered, your reflexes are slower, and often your personality is changed. Many violent acts have been committed by people who are under the influence of alcohol. Lawmakers understand that young bodies can't handle alcoholic beverages, such as wine or beer. The earlier a person starts drinking, the more likely he is to become dependent upon it. It is unlawful for children to drink alcohol. If you're caught drinking, you will be in trouble with the police. You may have a large fine to pay. You may even have trouble getting a driver's license later on. Do you know kids at school who are already drinking? Take a look at their lives. Are they really happy? How are their grades? Are they doing other bad things? There are so many better things to do that are fun and legal. Make many friends, participate in sports, learn to play a musical instrument, study to make good grades. No one knows when the Lord will return. Would you want him to find you doing something you shouldn't when he comes back? You should obey God because you love him and want to please him. 
If someone tries to get you to drink alcohol, remember, it's illegal. Don't mess up your life with alcohol. God has many good things in store for you, so don't be a fool. Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for teaching us in your word about the dangers of young people drinking alcohol. Help me to learn to resist temptation and just say no. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There's a couple of things in today's story that I want to touch on. First, today's story is not only warning us not to drink excessively, but most importantly for you right now, is not to break the law by drinking at your age. When you are young, and if you are not thinking clearly because of alcohol or even drugs, you can make some really, really bad choices in life. I want you to know that not only does your family love you, but your friends and neighbors do too, and they want to encourage and help you to do the best in everything you do. And if you mess up, help you with God's help. The second thing I want to touch on is Jesus has promised he's going to return and to heal our earth. I don't think we've touched on that before, and it's a pretty big deal. Jesus is in heaven with God right now. The Holy Spirit is working through all of us here on earth. The Holy Spirit is there when you feel God is protecting and comforting you. The Holy Spirit can be that voice that speaks in you and encourages you or warns you away from something. Some people call that a gut instinct, but it's the Holy Spirit working in you. The Holy Spirit is always present, even if we aren't listening for it or in tune with it. When Jesus returns, he's promised that it will be like heaven on earth. We don't know the date and the time, but he has not let us down on any other promise before. He's not going to start now. There will be no more sickness, no more heartache, no more greed, just peace, love, and happiness. And Jesus invites us all to be a part of it. It sounds remarkable and almost too good to be true, doesn't it? So to celebrate the change of another season and to celebrate that we are never far from the Holy Spirit and from God's love and to celebrate that Jesus promises he will return and make our earth beautiful and whole again, we are going to make a party punch that every member in your family can enjoy. Hi everyone. To help us think about today's story and the lesson in there, we are going to make a family-friendly party punch that you guys can enjoy. So in your kit, you would have gotten uh, a, a singles, you would have gotten a juice box, and you would have gotten a can of ginger ale. And hopefully you haven't drank them all already, but this is really simple. You're gonna open up your single pack, dump it in. You're gonna add two cups of water. You're gonna open up your juice box. This will probably be the most fun I imagine for a bunch of you. You stab it. Yeah, here we go. And just, you just squeeze it in there. Who doesn't like doing that? All right, like so. And a can of ginger ale. Oop. Actually, I'm going to stir it first to make sure there's no powder on the bottom. Fizzing. There we go. And ideally, you have a cup full of ice. I don't have any ice here. Cheers to you. Enjoy. Well, that's it for unit one. Next week, we're going to start into unit two called Mission Possible. I'm looking forward to this one because it tells of events that seemed utterly impossible. But as with Jesus, nothing is impossible. Then we will start talking about Palm Sunday and Easter. I hope you all have an amazing week and I'll see you next time.